I'm Tim with Ecofoil, and today I'd like to talk about some different types of foam insulation. One of the biggest concerns for homeowners today is how to conserve energy and especially save money on their energy costs. And one of the easiest places to do this is in the attic. Now some of the most common types of insulation you'll see around the attic are cellulose, fiberglass, and radiant barrier. There's been a little controversy lately about whether or not radiant barrier is technically an insulation, but the fact is it can help add substantial value to the existing insulation in your attic. Now the first one I'd like to talk about is cellulose. Now some of the pros about cellulose are it's made primarily of recycled paper, usually 75% or more of post-consumer waste, which gives it its appearance of ground-up newspaper. Um, it has no significant effect on indoor air quality, and it has a relatively high R value per inch, which makes, makes it great for tight spaces. Now some of the downsides are it does require a special blower and some hoses to install it. Um, it does absorb moisture which can affect the R value and if it's exposed to moisture for long periods of time there is a potential for mold growth. When it comes to fiberglass, fiberglass is available in rolls or bats or also a loose fill variety which makes it great for blowing into the attic. Um, it has very low moisture absorption and it's non-combustible which is a benefit. On the other hand, it can be a little more expensive than some other varieties of insulation and it's made of silica sand and recycled glass which means the fibers can be irritants to your eyes, skin, and throat especially if you don't wear the proper protective equipment. And it has no reflective value which means it does nothing to directly combat the flow of radiant heat. Which brings us to radiant barrier. Now radiant barrier's main goal is to reflect that radiant heat back where it belongs and it has an extremely high reflective value and a very low emissive value, which means the heat that does come in contact with the radiant barrier is not going to be easily transferred through to the other side. It's going to be reflected back where it came from. How does this work? Ecofoil radiant barriers are made with 99.9 percent .9 pure aluminum, which is extremely reflective. In the center layer, there is a layer of polyester reinforcement, which makes it extremely tear resistant and puncture resistant. And it passes the latest standards for Class 1, Class A fire rating. Now Ecofoil is also relatively easy to install. Typically all the tools you need are a pair of scissors and a stapler. Um, there's a couple different methods for installation. You can lay it down over the attic floor on top of the existing insulation. If you do that, you want to use the perforated radiant barrier so the moisture vapor can escape up through the attic. Uh, this is most effective during the colder months. As the heat tries to escape the home up into the attic, it will reach the radiant barrier and be reflected back down into the living space. The second method would be to staple it on the underside of the rafters. Now, this is going to be most effective during the hotter months. As the heat tries to come through the roof into the attic space, it's going to hit the radiant barrier and be reflected back out. Ideally, you would use both of these methods, but some consideration should be given to is more of your heating and cooling expense in the winter months or in the summer months. And some key points to remember, mass insulation is focused on slowing the flow of heat. Radiant barriers are focused on reflecting that heat back where it belongs. But radiant barriers aren't necessarily intended to replace your mass insulation. They're meant to work together. And as always, if you have any questions, please give us a call at 888-DIY-FOIL or check us out online at ecofoil.com. Thank you.